now we are going to begin our the next two talks of our session because we have as our uh, moderator the convener of this conference dr tasneema akhtar associate professor department of english kumila university and she is going to be the moderator of the next two session so over to you dr tasneema akhtar thank you very much dipti so hello everyone uh, i'm tasneema akhtar again i'll be moderating this session and the next session Hope you enjoy the session. And please write down any questions you have in the chat box for the final five uh, five minute question and answer session for each speaker. So our next speaker is Dr. Jahurul Islam, lecturer, Department of Linguistics, University of British Columbia, Canada. Jahurul Islam is a linguist with an interest in articulatory and acoustic phonetics, phonology, sociophonetics. and quantitative approaches to linguistics studies mr islam received his phd from georgetown university washington dc usa in 2019 before that he completed his ma in linguistics from north carolina state university usa as a fulbright scholar prior to his graduate studies in the usa dr islam taught at kumila university and jahanginagar university bangladesh i'm pleased to mention that jahurul is my friend classmate from jahanginagar university and we also started our career together at kumila university in 2009 the title of his talk is incorporating objective methods in phonetics research the context of bangladesh the floor is yours Joy. Thanks, Dr. Akhtar. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, I will admit, actually, you may you may find my talk a little disappointing because this is not exactly ELT, but um, I can at the same time um, assume that you. probably would enjoy it and uh, it will be interesting to you because i will try to establish a connection with phonetics and um, and elt so um, as you heard so i'm uh, i'm a phonetician and uh, phonologist so i'll but i'll try to establish a connection so let's go with it so let's first ask a question you trust your ears and uh, by that what i mean is i'll check it out right now let's do it right now okay so i'll play a sound to you probably uh, many of you have heard this phenomenon this was um, a very viral thing in uh, 2017 and 18 and uh, I will play a sound to you and uh, oh by the way I didn't sorry I'll, I have to stop sharing and then share my computer audio first all right so I'll play some uh, play a sound to you it will play uh, several times and uh, respond in the chat box what you hear so do you hear yanny or do you hear floral So these two distinct words, yani or laurel, and uh, just write the word that you hear in the chat box. So I'm playing this out. see my chat why so oh okay you know i can Hold see that page uh yes i can see it now okay okay all right all right excellent okay so that's expected okay so as you can see 
a bunch of people heard Yanni. Uh, many people heard Laurel. All right, that's interesting. Now let's do it again with another piece of sound. <clears throat> now, do you hear Kai or Guy? So if you hear Kai, just type it in the chat box and to Guy, you type it that way. So again. I can play it again. Okay, someone said they didn't hear either of them. Okay, interesting. That would be a third category then. All right, neither. So Kai, mostly Kai. Anyone else would like to respond? None. I mean, in that case, you heard a third category probably. Okay, so that's interesting. I didn't expect a third category there. But yeah, so what did we do? Um, by the way, so um, I was expecting this thing. So if you are a native speaker of Bangla or any Indic language, you will probably hear Kai. Uh, but uh, if this sound is played to an English speaker, they are, they will tend to hear guy, not guy. Uh, but it is, it's interesting that you have heard a third category. Um, did you hear Kai or guy? I don't know. So let's come back to that phenomenon later. Okay, so <clears throat> what did we do? So we collected some impressionistic data. So here, what you did is you listened to a sound and you subjectively decided what you heard. So the data comes in the form of a decision that you were making after hearing a sound. So this is impressionistic data. So we will be, today, uh, we will be actually talking about the use of impressionistic data in um, phonetic studies primarily. So today's talk, we will be talking about the nature of impressionistic data and uh, how it is being used in uh, phonetics studies in the context of Bangladesh, in Bangladesh mostly. And uh, what, uh, why do we need to think beyond um, impressionistic data and uh, how can we do that? I will show you two examples or ideas. Some of the concepts may seem new, but just bear with me. Uh, I will leave some resources. All right, so what is the impressionistic, the nature of the impressionistic data? As we saw, so we, when we were deciding whether we hear Yanni or Laurel, we had different kind of opinion from different speakers. So that means we rely on our years. So when a researcher is collecting impressionistic data, so they have to rely on their years. So if the researcher, mostly we, we say that they, this is relying, to, relying on the trained years of the researcher. And uh, often you will hear the sound from the participant uh, themselves in a live speech and uh, maybe uh, transcribe it using some broad transcription notations. And if you were maybe more skilled enough, you will probably use some narrow transcription uh, convention as well. So crucially, impressionistic data depends on the researcher's coding of the data. So this is not, this is subjective. So this is not as objective um, yeah, as we may want sometimes. But um, yeah, so that is impressionistic data. And uh, um, this type of data has been used in um, Bangladeshi, in, in, in many uh, phonetic studies in Bangladesh, like I can give you 
uh, I'm setting two examples here. So this one, this study, in this study, Kosh studied the Navarro dialects uh, of Jashore district. So uh, he tried to see whether the pronunciation of certain vowels differ from the standard Bangla. So as you can see, so this is the, the five, and it's a, a little confusing, but uh, there's two types of five pointed stars and uh, uh, four pointed stars. So they are represent two different dialects, a standard one and, and the Navarro dialect. So they are a little different here it's a little different. They are more like the same, but the coding of the data where the vowel falls in the vowel chart, how front it is, it should be. So how front do I hear the sound to be? So all the data come from impressionistic observation. Another example, this is for consonants. So Rani and Tina um, studied um, and try to describe how regional variants of Bangla can affect um, the pronunciation accuracy, accuracy of um, some fricatives, English fricatives. So particularly one example is here, the sh oh, sorry, shame. So shame could be pronounced. So this was um, from uh, probably Chittagong division. Um, the participant was from <coughs> Chittagong division. Excuse me. <coughs> And uh, you can see different types of pronunciation. So like uh, shame or chem. So like this. So again, these kind of these all these um, transcription were done um, on the basis of subjective impression of um, the researcher. Now the question is, <clears throat> what are the strengths and weaknesses of this kind of impressionistic data? Um, obviously, it comes with some strengths because it is uh, easier. It's easier. So all you need is to get to your speaker and uh, listen to their pronunciation and uh, transcribe it as you hear it. So no tools required other than paper and pencil. And uh, it doesn't require much knowledge of any computational tools. And uh, you just simply you listen to the sound and uh, decide a category that the sound belongs to. Now, with the strengths, it actually comes with a lot of weaknesses as well. So two very predominant, very big disadvantage of impressionistic data is that um, uh, your perception, that means the way you perceive a sound, the, the, the way you hear a sound, can be heavily influenced by your own language experience. For example, um, as I was referring to the Kai and Kai situation, so it is likely that Bangla speakers would hear the sound as Ka, but English speakers would hear it as Ga. Why? Because the languages come with their own phonotactics or the language specific phonology. So, so that phonology, the, the language's phonology is putting, uh, uh, leading you to some specific categorization scheme. And that's why your categorization would be different uh, depending on what languages you speak. That means it's the same sound. So, as you heard, uh, as it was the case for Yanni Laurel as well, it's the same sound, but you, you perceived it pretty differently. Why? Because you speak different languages. Your first languages are different. And the second one is, um, is language uh, independent. It could be directly related to your biological status of your body. So like uh, um, as we age, our hair cells in our inner year, they fall. So they fall off and uh, that reduces our capability of identifying, hearing, or listening to high frequency sounds. So that's why you may find that uh, aged people um, are having a hard time identifying uh, sounds like the fricatives 
they, which are very high frequency sounds. So, uh, and uh, whoever, even this can, this can actually happen to young people as well if they are exposed to noisy environments at all. Uh, I mean, noisy environments um, too much. So what happens by these two factors? So we can see that actually impressionistic data makes it a little difficult for us to collect um, generalizable data and reproducible data. So the, the coding of the da data can be widely different based on the person who is coding as we, as we saw in the Yeni, Laurel and Kaidai um, survey here. Okay, so now for the weakness part again, I said I, I will try to connect it to ELT. So say we are talking about teaching English tense lax contrasts. So that is um, in, in, the, in British convention, you will see they are being called like long vowels versus short vowels. Now, how are you going to decide your, your so, so you are teaching your students English vowels and how are you going to decide if they are producing these contrast successfully? So if you are a Bangla speaker, you, how, how are you going to decide just by listening to them? Because listening can be a little tricky and you cannot really probably rely on your own judgment. So if they're saying bit versus bit or feet versus fit. So these sounds are not contrasted in Bangla. So how are you going to decide that your uh, participants, your students are acquiring all these sounds, the contrasts. Now, um, we actually ran a, a study which is in preparation at this moment. So what we did, we uh, exposed some, uh, we played some sounds like say beat uh, to our participants. And they, uh, they saw this screen on their computer and they had to decide, um, just press the button on your, on your keyboard and they had to come up with a decision what sound they heard, if they heard beat or bit. So we wanted to see how consistent they can be. Uh, are they able to consistently hear the difference between these two sounds or identify the tense and lax, lax contrast? And uh, our findings says that no, they can't. So Bangla speakers, we're not able to distinguish the tense vowels from the lax vowels. So they were just guessing. And uh, this can, this indicates that actually it's the, even the teacher may not be able to identify whether their students are doing it right or not, whether students have acquired that ability to produce the contrast, the ten, tense versus lax contrast. Okay, now, the question is, we now have a problem. What would be the solution? How can we go beyond this and beyond impressionistic data? I mean, obviously, you can imagine, we need to take some help from somewhere else. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we need to take some advantage from computational tools. And uh, um, we need to uh, may uh, we need to have some measurements from the acoustic parameters I and mean, the speech signals. So we need to talk in terms of the speech signals. Um, basically, we record the speech from our participants and then we open it. We visualize the sound in some kind of software and then we extract some parameters, the, our uh, the parameters that we are interested in. Uh, using some software. And the prop is such kind of software. And this is very, very uh, widely used in um, phonetics and uh, phonology. And I think um, in simpler cases, even ELT practitioners or second language acquisition, first language acquisition people, so they, they can pretty easily adapt um, their strategies by incorporating uh, some acoustics in their data. So 
Yeah, so Pratt is a very small uh, software, but very useful and very powerful, very popular, and uh, it's free. And I don't, I know in Bangladesh, we don't need to worry about paying price for a software, but this is generally free and legal. All right, so I'm not going to run any. Juhrul, uh, you have five minutes. Thank sure. you. So, okay, so now, I promise uh, I will give you two examples or ideas. So here, uh, one question again. Have you heard any Bangla dialects uh, where you see, uh, and, and if anyone from Man is from Manasing here, so they can verify. So uh, Manasing people tend to say Neta as Neta. Anyone agree? In money too. Okay, <laughs> in money as well. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, more than one dialect. But the question is, do the people themselves who speak like this, do they perceive this difference? Probably no. They will say that I'm saying it right. And uh, how do you how do you prove that they are the same? The a and a these two vowels are the same. So, well, we need to do acoustics. So what we do, we record some vowels or words that have these vowels and then extract some parameters like this. So F1 and F2, like formant one and formant two. If you open the sound in prop, you will, you will see all these waves and these uh, spectrograms. And these format patterns are going to be extracted. You will get, have numbers, formal numbers and you'll be able to compare them. So data, the data is going to speak for yourself instead of your subjective observations. And here are the results. This is from a published paper of ours. So as you can see, so this is MSB, the Mamansing dialect, and uh, you, you can see there is an overlap of A vowel and A vowel. And uh, this is the region of A and A, and you can see it's kind of a total overlap. That means there is no difference between these two vowels in this dialect. And in other case, in SCB standard colloquial, standard Bangla, standard colloquial Bangla, you see these two vowels are totally different. So this gives you an idea how to approach uh, or analyze the vowel differences. And uh, you can do it for consonants as well. For example, in some dialects you, uh, you will hear of instead of saying gore, they will say gore. And uh, are they really uh, pronouncing these two sounds the same way? You can see it in Prat and then mm, compare the duration. All you need to do is compare the duration. Here you can see ka is way longer and ga is shorter. So just to summarize what we did, uh, so Phonetics studies in Bangladesh has mostly relied on impressionistic data, but impressionistic data actually lacks the power of um, reliability and reproducibility to a great extent. And uh, it should be a better way to approach uh, incorporating uh, to the measurements from acoustic signals. This will um, empower us to make our studies more generalizable and more reproducible. I know that uh, it could be challenging um, and intimidating, but there are very handy resources. I'm happy to um, have emails or any contact about any help if someone needs. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zahrul Islam. Uh, very enlightening talk. Uh, I believe it will be useful for linguists researchers in Bangladesh who are doing impressionistic research. So I'm inviting uh, questions from the audience. Yes, please, Amin Rahman, go on, please, with your question. Okay. Hello. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johurul Islam. I don't know whether you know or not. I am a uh, I'm working on English pronunciation uh, since long, and I've used Prat. Uh, and I don't know whether you have used this golden speaker builder by 
Professor Levis and his team. Uh, anyway, uh, you may come across it soon. It's a very new product. Uh, and uh, <laughs> regarding the dialects from different areas, I'm currently working on that also. And uh, uh, currently I'm, whether it's the, my pet bishkare na pat bishkare, that's a standard thing, isn't it? Bangladesh, they, most, most people, not only uh, Maman Singh, I, I happen to be from uh, Netrokona. Okay, so many of those things, uh, uh, and they also cannot uh, pronounce O, they make it U, U. And similarly, they uh, make, they don't have P, almost negligible. It is very, uh, rarely they will pronounce P. P, they will make it to F, or her, huh. farbo, farbo, uh, falaisen, uh, and this thing. And similarly, b will become b, bala, balasuni, huh? balasuin. And cha, cha, they will say as so. So anyway, th thank you very much. Uh, 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 would you be able to send me the, uh, uh, this uh, reference to that Rani's paper, which you quoted, Rani and somebody sure, else, sure. Uh, 2020. Uh, I haven't seen that. That's a more recent paper. Uh, but yes, good, good to know that there's another person working on another part of the world on similar things. Uh, I, I have been working uh, for quite some time uh, on you. English so pronunciation. Much. That's a lot of encouragement. So uh, yeah, actually, we also um, included the back vowels in our paper, as, um, uh, the 2020 paper. So. Uh, but actually, we had li very limited set of data to compare. Mm -hmm, or, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're not so confident about our generalization about like uh, the people are calling phone in uh, phone instead of phone, um, yeah. or or dhul instead of dhol. So yeah, um, yeah. But actually, we we were expecting that there would be some very categorical categorical overlap or uh, as like yeah. as a Vowels, yeah, I'm 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 doing study on actually, a different we region. Didn't region. Find it. We couldn't, yeah, we couldn't really yeah confirm yeah, I, this. I, I'm overlap. I'm doing study on re regional uh, uh, Bangla dialects, and again, currently I'm doing on Netrokona. Ta becomes da. Ta becomes da. Okay, koida 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 yas. Uh, uh, so this sort yeah, of I thing assume, is very. I assume there could be some uh, uh, environment. I mean. Uh, the contextual voicing going on, maybe intervocalic positions. Yeah. So, but yeah. okay, still, we, we need, a we need few more. more questions, actually. Can we give okay. them more? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yes. talk later yes. on. Sultana Rima, can you please ask your question? Sure. Uh, sir, I was wondering if uh, we can uh, analyze sentence level data with uh, Pratt. Uh, you talked about that uh, we can analyze words. Uh, and if we want to see that how one words uh, affect the pronunciation of other words, we ca can we analyze that with Pratt? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, Pratt allows you to work with any level of data. So you have the control, so whatever you want to make. So um, sometimes you may be interested in sentence level uh, phenomenon, like super segmental, like tone or intonation, and sometimes word level stress or, um, you yeah, primary, secondary stress, and so on. And anything is possible in Pratt, yes. I'm happy to follow, uh, answer any follow-up questions later on as well. Okay, we have uh, two more hands raised. Uh, I'm asking uh, Dr. Jamil, you have a question? Uh, thank you very much. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Jamil, thank you very much. Zorway after many days. And um, yeah. <laughs> I was just having an idea or just an expectation that if I could be your student, to learn all these phonetics things and such dif difficult area, such a, but you have explained it such a nice way. Um, I was just wondering uh, whether uh, in your data set, um, do you classify the people according to their social class or exposure of English language teaching? Because I think that my when I was in Bangladesh, basically, I'm present, I'm in the UK. And my son's understanding of English language is better than I because he regularly watches cartoons. So what do you think about that? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the, the, depending on social class, depending on the, um, on the social group, so language is different. So it depends, totally depends on the 
research question and depending on the research question, I need to pick some specific group of people. I need to specific, uh, specify the category of people or the group of people I would need to uh, have an answer to my research question. Uh, was that your question basically? You know, that's fine. Yeah, excellent. I, I, I was interested to know about whether you did any classification there or not. Or just yes, yes, it is, it, is very, it is very common to do in sociophonetic study or sociolinguistics. For example, we were interested to see how the younger group mm -hmm. or middle-aged or aged group. So, um, so young people, old, old people and uh, uh, very old uh, and middle-aged people, do they differ in terms of their pronunciation? So in this way, we have to categorize, we have to pick, ensure that we are sampling people from all these categories or strata. And uh, of course, for the socioeconomic class by profession, so government service holders versus um, education level um, and so on. So all these things can, can influence the choice of language and uh, language performance. And that's why- One more to... quick question. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for interruption, lots of questions. From Anis, Anis, can you please go very quickly? Anis Rahman here. Oh, maybe disconnected. No problem. Yeah. Madam I, Tasnima, I, I had a question. Talk. Yes, who is that? Madam Tasnima, I am Parin Chandra Bormon. Okay, a quick question, please. Ran uh, uh, Dr. Jarul, thank you very much. Um, you focused mainly on research uh, on phonetics, but, but let me tell you in Bangladesh, uh, teaching pronunciation in Bangladesh has been a huge challenge, very challenging. Uh, I, I don't know whether you could uh, highlight a little bit about uh, teaching pronunciation um, in, in, in Bangladeshi classrooms. I mean, how is it possible to easily uh, teach or develop pronunciation um, in these students? Um, uh, would be highly... Uh, Glad if you could. I, mean, I, uh, I, I don't know if my limitations. Your, I don't do your research. I'll, admit, I'll, I'll I have limitation because I, I don't uh, do ELT research, but uh, I, no. I do think that it is possible for uh, ELT practitioners, whoever in, into pronunciation teaching, to take some advantage. So, what is going on? Uh, are the students capable of learning? Or, or if, okay. first of all, they themselves need to build those categories first, right? So before even teaching those tense and lax contrasts and so on. So yeah, I think the, these tools can be incorporated, but I don't see a very, I don't have any panacea. I don't have any uh, lexer uh, that can help or solve the problem right away. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It was Thank really, really great. Uh, I also know a bit of uh, Pratt and would love to learn more from you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Yes, Dr. Uh, Joe, we have, have yes, we have a certificate for you on behalf of Kisa Society of Bangladesh. Yes, Matikur Rahman, I would request you to display the certificate. Thank you, appreciate it.